Hi, my name is David Albert. I'm the board chairman of Friendly Water for the World, Olympia's own non-governmental organization. We bring technologies that uh, provide clean drinking water to people around the world. We actually don't do it for folks, but we teach folks to do it for themselves. We have projects in seven countries in Africa, India, Afghanistan, Honduras. We also train people in the United States who want to go help. And with me today is Drisia Ross. Mm -hmm. uh, Drisia is a master's student, actually just submitted her thesis yeah. last night <laughs> at Evergreen Finally. State College. Uh, she was an intern for Friendly Water for the World, and she was working on a very important a piece of research for us. Drissy, you want to tell us about the research and what prompted you to do it? Um, well, it all started with a pure coincidence. I met Jenny Stern. Um, at one Our treasurer. Of, yeah. Um, so I was last summer, I was hunting for some research project ideas, and I met Jenny, and she was like, well, we work on um, uh, providing biosand filters for um, communities that don't have enough resources to afford very sophisticated um, um, methods for clean water. And I was like, that sounds awesome to me. I was so excited about it. So we had a meeting and she was talking to me about um, ways to improve communication between friendly water for the world and the communities that they work um, with right. and I was like well that all sounds good to me but something is missing I want something that like science in the lab something right. that I, I can experiment with it was like she was like well I know that arsenic is a problem in so many places right. so, so let me let me stop you there so yeah. biosand filters of course are yeah. a very simple household technology and mm -hmm. affordable technology Correct. and they're really designed to to remove microbials Yes. bacteria and virus parasites worms mm -hmm. they're very effective at that we've been able to stop cholera typhoid bacterial dysentery yes. but many of the communities also have problems with heavy metals mm -hmm. now the biosand filters have been proven to take out some level of cadmium manganese lead iron but arsenic in many communities has proven to be a particularly difficult problem yes so um Arsenic is an uh, odorless, tasteless um, um, metalloid that exists naturally in the water and can be released back to the environment through natural processes or anthropogenic processes. Um, and as you were saying, arsenic is a huge problem for many countries, including India, where you already have um, some projects over there, and uh, Nepal and Bangladesh. So. Um, the Kanchan filter, which is an adaptation of the biosand filter, it's basically the same thing except that the Kanchan filter have an added layer of non-galvanized um, nails, iron. nails as or any source of iron or um, iron hydroxide. So the Kanchan method actually came from Nepal. They, 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 they were very happy with microbial removal, mm -hmm. but they still had this terrific problem with arsenic. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. uh, what kind of health conditions does arsenic in the water cause? It causes so many um, um, diseases um, depending on the dose and the um, period of exposure. So there is short-term and long-term exposures that can cause a virus of um, cancers. Causes cancers. I've also heard that in some stages it actually the symptoms can mimic those of leprosy. That's very true, and that's why in these communities, they haven't been aware of the arsenic problem. Mm -hmm. So people, they have been showing um, skin lesions that looked for them just like leprosy. Right. So people have been isolated. They haven't been allowed to attend any social, religious, or any kind of... Functions, right. Yeah. So they have been isolated from the community and they have been hiding their symptoms which actually right. um, didn't help with um, identifying arsenic contamination. I know in South India where I work, in fact, there are leper colonies and schools for lepers mm -hmm. and it's, al it's almost 30 years ago now they discovered that many of the people in the leper colony weren't in fact lepers, yeah. but in fact were su suffering from arsenic poisoning. That's true. 
Um, there's also a project I know the World Health Organization was trying to dig um, wells in Bangladesh. Shallow wells, and that's actually, they had very good attention and for a while they have been working, they have been trying to find um, alternative sources for clean water right. because the surface water have heavily been contaminated with bacteria and stuff. Right. So they tried to find an alternative. So they came up with the idea of digging shallow, shallow wells, wells in Bangladesh. However, that the shallow wells were heavily contaminated with arsenic. And they didn't they test didn't them think, at one point. Yes, right? because you can't really tell if the water is contaminated if you don't do the appropriate testing. analysis and right. testing. And so I know so, stories of tens of thousands of children who are impacted by arsenic poisoning from wells that were dug by the World Health Organization. Yes. So tell us more about your research. So I um, got six filters from Friendly Water for the World. I have them here on campus. I have been working uh, on evaluating their effectiveness in reducing the arsenic concentration in the water. So because I didn't have um, um, access to naturally contaminated water, I had to mix um, arsenic right. <laughs> with, <laughs> with tap water and um, it's six liters of tap water with increasing arsenic concentrations that I ran through five filters that had five replicates mm -hmm. and one filter I have it as a control with no iron nails no arsenic added. So it's really kind of simple. You took a biosand filter mm -hmm. and then took some non-galvanized iron nails. I used 4.5 kilograms. 4.5 kilograms yes. of iron nails. You wrapped them in cloth? No. No, you actually it just stuck exposed. them in. I exposed. actually, it's better to leave them exposed because that accelerated their um, rusting process. Right, it will be faster. Yeah, yeah. So you stuck them in on basically in the top level in the reservoir of the filter. Uh, on the... What is called that, that metal... Uh, right, the diffuser plate. Diffuser, on, yes. Yeah. And on top of the diffuser mm -hmm. plate, so you put 4.5 uh, kilograms, kilograms mm -hmm. of iron nails, and then what happened? And then I left them there for a ripening time, even though I wasn't really uh, evaluating the filters for their uh, microbial... Um, 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 removal. Removal. I wanted to have them as close as how they would be in the field. So I left them safe for a while and then I started I started with only 33 parts per billion arsenic mm. concentration because I wasn't sure how well they would work and that at the lab assistant that I was working with she was kind of concerned when she looked at the filters like is that gonna work? I was like well I think it will work and um, she was concerned that I will end up with a lot of arsenic waste that right. she now, had in, to shave. <laughs> in Washington state, um, I think the, the standard is 10 parts per billion? Yes. And is there a World Health Organization standard? It's EPA standard. EPA. And, and yeah, in, in many countries it's 10, it's like most developing countries, it's 10 parts per billion. But mm -hmm. in countries like India and Bangladesh, it's still at 50 parts per billion. Right. Because they just haven't been removing the arsenic to that degree. Well, they can't afford to, you know, remove arsenic till like below 10. Right, okay. So you started at 33 parts per billion. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. That have been re um, reduced to between 3.5 to 5.5 parts per billion. Wow, just um, through a bunch of nails. Yes. So you, do you want to tell us about the chemical process by which that happens? Um, it's very easy. It works by a process of adsorption and filtration, coagulation. Mm -hmm. So when you pour the arsenic um, water um, contaminated uh, through the filter, so the arsenic in the water bind with the um, ferric hydroxide mm -hmm. and they form molecules that are, or aggregates, that are big enough to be filtered by the column of sand and gravel. Oh, so they are left in the sand or they are left on the nails? Uh, they are left on, well, some do, well, I would imagine they'll be stuck like on, on the nails, but most of it is going to be on the um, column, in the column of sand. In the column. Gravel. And so iron is then released and flows through the filter? Um, no, I, I actually tested for iron as well. Right. Just to see if the, um, the fact that we added iron nails mm -hmm. would add more iron in the water that we want. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't Oh, it didn't case. do that. Well, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. That's good. So you don't have iron contaminated water either. No. Okay. And so what was the highest concentration you used? 
2,500 2, parts per billion. Yes. People would get very sick at that amount, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, very, very, very sick. Right. I I did a very deep research to um, see what is the concentration that is naturally occurring in nature, like that people are dealing with. Mm. In some parts in Nepal, I found that um, in some villages there is two balls like with arsenic concentration as high as 2,500 parts per billion. So you use so the highest concentration. Of, it's not actually the highest. Uh, after, but close. Yeah. It's yeah, they can, yeah, in some places the concentration can be higher than that, but the one I, I tested for was 2,500 per billion, which was reduced to 7.2. So you took a concentration of oh, 2,500 2, 2, 2, yes, per billion yeah. and reduced it to below World Health Organization standards to 7.5 per billion. <laughs> 7.2, so it would yes. be, now it would be excellent drinking water. Very, very excellent. And what did your colleague in the lab say? Um, I was actually working by myself, but the, the laboratory assistant they right. helped me on um, to learn how to use the ICPMS, which right. is, by the way, uh, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, yeah. which is an instrument that can detect um, heavy metals in the water to weigh um, like down to part per billion. I see. So it's very, very, very precise instruments, and that's actually one reason that I wanted to replicate the um, um, evaluation of effectiveness that have been done on the filters right. from other research, because most of other research they used field kits ah, to I measure see. the arsenic concentration, right. and you know, field kits they. I mean, they can't tell you approximately how much you have right. you know, acid concentration, but they are not. I mean, they go precise. beyond they go beyond a plus minus test, but yes. not not yeah. far enough. But yeah, but the method that I used is very, very, very accurate. I see. So yeah. it sounds to me like your research will likely be publishable. I I'm I'm gonna try to. Right. Yeah. I'm sure our friends at the Center for Affordable Water and Sanitation Technology yeah, up in Canada are gonna be very interested in the research because again, yeah. we do work and they work in places where there are high arsenic concentrations. Yeah. And um, again, while biosan filters were designed to remove microbials, the ability to remove arsenic at the same time will be is a very, very important development. So um, I, one point that I would like to add is, um, so remember as I was talking about having five replicates with mm -hmm. uh, five filters with iron nails added? So um, the filter number one is the only one that I was able to run the concentration of 2,500 per billion through that filter. I didn't run it through all the filters because I ran out of um, um, standards and stuff like the ICPMS right. requirements. Mm -hmm. So that's why I stopped there and also ran out of time. I had to submit my thesis. thesis right. um, but the concentration, the 2000 part per billion concentration, like, it have been run through all filters and it have been reduced to 1.9 part per billion. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it's 99.9% it's .9 effectiveness. That's amazing. It, it blew my mind. So um, I guess a, a future piece of research would be how robust the removal would be over time. Yes, and also my my original question was like, um, what is the highest concentration that the the filter can, can still be effective? Yeah, they can remove. But I, I didn't get to answer that. But yeah, it's you still. couldn't get high enough at this point. <laughs> yes, that's. I amazing. wish I had more time to keep working on this right. amazing project. Well, perhaps, but I know that perhaps I that will be your doctoral dissertation. Well. we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not right now because I'm I'm really. Uh, yeah, it was it was very very hard process, but very rewarding too. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Those filters, by the way, were made by our friends Wayne and Noah Medrud from Yelm, Washington. Yeah. The Wayne and Noah actually have been in Burundi and in Uganda mm -hmm. of late, um, uh, helping communities there build biosand filters. I had actually taken them with me to India oh, cool. on projects that we were. We now have 30 new projects in India, and we had done two trainings there. Um, Oh, Tricia, you're from you're, you're from Morocco originally. Yes, I am an international student with a Master of Environmental Studies. Right. I am um, from Morocco, and I came here two years ago to mm -hmm. start a master degree. And um, eventually, I will go back home and mm -hmm. take all what I learned yeah. from here to benefit my community and 
Um, arsenic is not a very major problem in mm -hmm. Morocco. However, it is used in mining, but I, um, um, I don't know, probably they haven't been testing to actually know to really know the right. with you, if there is a problem in the first place. Right. So you think um, they might be used for bio sand filters in Morocco? Uh, in some places, I would say yes. Rural. Yeah. In rural areas. In like yeah, in like really removed areas, like up in the Atlas Mountains, or yeah, like yeah, in, in some places we do have um, problems with access to clean water. Well, perhaps we'll be working together at some point soon. Who knows? I haven't oh, been to Morocco awesome. yet, but it's it's on my wish list. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Right. So, and you're going to be with us next uh, Sunday at our annual dinner. Sure, I will be uh, Our dinner is going to be taking place uh, eight, uh, September 7th mm -hmm. at Newbridge Community Church. We're going to have Wayne and Noah and uh, Robin Lee have just re returned from Uganda and Burundi. will be there. Our team from Kenya will be back. Um, nice. We have Abraham Bezebe. He just come, came here from Ethiopia. Will tell us about his exciting programs outside of Addis Ababa and providing clean water. Uh, it's going to be quite the event. Uh, again, contact us. You can contact us through our website at uh, www.friendlywater.net. That's Friendly Water for the World, www.friendlywater.net. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.